Welcome to Breaking All Down. I'm Count Zero. It's time for the final installment of the History of the Rune Staff, and the final adventure of Dorian Hawkmoon in his own little book series, with the fourth book, appropriately titled The Rune Staff. As with the first three parts, I'm using art from the miniseries by First Comics to illustrate the events of the book. I'm not directly reviewing the comics. This is more reviewing the story that they both share in common. So if the visuals I'm describing seem different than the ones from the comic that I'm using, that's because I'm going by the images that popped into my head while I was reading the book, as opposed to what was depicted in the comics. This shouldn't be considered a fault of the comic or anything like that, that they differ from how I imagine things. It's, it's what makes books good. You get to imagine events in your head in different ways and picture characters in different ways. So, let's get started. Previously in the Chronicles of the Rune Staff, Dorian Hawkmoon and Juliam de Vere left the safety of Castle Brass, secreted away on another plane, to prevent the Dark Empire of Grand Britain from using a series of rings in the possession of Mygan of Yandar to launch an attack against the city. In the process, they were forced to enter Grand Britain's capital, Lundra, disguised as emissaries from the land of Asia Communista. In the process, de Vere met the cousin of King Emperor Huan, Flana. Miko Sivar, and the two fell in love. Hawkmoon and Dever travel to Yell, to the west of Lundra, and find Mygan, and learn they must find the Sword of the Dawn and the Rune Staff if they are to overcome the Dark Empire and restore the balance between law and chaos. After Baron Melanatus, who had become obsessed with finding Hawkmoon and Castle Brass and destroying the both of them, finds Mygan's cave and wounds Mygan, Mygan transforms himself, transports himself and our heroes to the distant land of Amarek, after which he dies, directing our heroes to the city of Narleen with his last words. Reaching Narleen, our heroes recover the Sword of the Dawn from Narleen's inner city, Starvel, with the help of the pirate hunter Bouchard and the warrior in jet and gold. The warrior informs Hawkmoon that he must travel to the land of Denark to retrieve the rune staff, but Hawkmoon refuses, planning to return to Europe, Camarg, and home as our story begins. Hawkmoon's planned return to Europe is thwarted by weather and magical creatures which force him off course and to Denank, making it clear that his GM favors railroading. On Denark, Hawkmoon and Dever meet Orland Fank of Orkney. Fank brings news that Camarg is safe, though Tozer has disappeared from the city. Fank takes them to, Denar to the main city of Denark, where they're introduced to a boy named Jemaya Cornelius, which I presume is in some way related in some fashion or another to Jerry Cornelius of that series of books, which I'll get to at some point in the future. In addition to Jemaya, Zebdenark is also inhabited by a collection of beings called the Great Good Ones. Meanwhile, back in Grand Britain, Melanotis had enough of the King Emperor calling him paranoid for thinking Hawkmoon is out to get him, even though he doesn't have any evidence to prove this though he's right. Um, so he decides to overthrow Huan and put Huan's cousin, Falana, on the throne. Back in Denark, Count Senegar Trot of Grand Bretagne has arrived, seeking to bribe the people of Amarak to ally themselves with Grand Bretagne, only to discover that he has not in fact arrived in Amarak, but instead in Denark, and that they have the rune staff. Trot attempts to seize the rune staff, only to be rebuffed as Cornelius reveals that he is, in fact, the spirit of the Rune Staff. Hawkmoon summons the Legion of the Dawn, and our heroes, along with the recently arrived warrior in Jet and Gold, do battle with, against the forces of Grand Britain. Trot and his men are slain, but in the process, the warrior in Jet and Gold also falls. Cornelius instructs Hawkmoon to use the Rune Staff as his battle standard, and that they must use the power in their possession to do battle with the Dark Empire before returning to the Relic. Hawkmoon and Dever return to Camarg, where he informs Count Brass and his friends of their new mission, and they make their plans for war. In Grand Bretagne, civil war has begun. Melanotis has made alliances with the leaders of other knightly orders, and has begun his coup against Huan. The battle is brief, as far as civil wars are concerned, taking only a few weeks. 
During this time, Melonatus has one of his allies activate a device he invented, which allows him to break the crystal gadget, keeping Castle Brass in limbo, returning them to Europe. Upon returning to their reality, Hawkwind and company learn that the forces of the Dark Empire have pretty much abandoned Camargue and much of Europe, as many of their soldiers have been withdrawn to Grand Britain to fight against Melonatus' forces. As Melonatus comes closer and closer to overthrowing Huan, the forces of Count Brass, with the Count, Baugentel, Hawkmoon, Oladan, Dever, and Ysilda, who is bearing Hawkmoon's child, leading the forces, set out to crush the Dark Empire once and for all. In Lundra, Melonatus and his men breach Huan's throne room, and Melonatus manages to cut down Huan in his throne globe, only to be blinded in the process. However, his victory is short-lived. Not long after Falana's coronation, word reaches Lundra of Hawkmoon and Count Brass's advance. Melonatus decides to meet Hawkmoon's army on the bridge between Grand Bretagne and the mainland. The ensuing battle is epic. Hawkmoon summons the Legion of the Dawn, and the ensuing battle rages from the bridge all the way to Lundra. In the battle, Count Brass, Oladon, Baugentel, and Dever are all slain, with Dever being killed in Falana's throne room as he fights his way to reach his beloved. However, Hawkmoon, at long last, slays Melonatus, and with Melonatus and his fellow nobles slain, Falana is able to stop the fighting and begin a path to permanent peace and the dissolution of the Dark Empire. This volume is, frankly, amazing, as is the series as a whole. The book builds fantastically on all of the past events of the last three books to an excellent conclusion and an exciting one, the big epic pitched battle um, that is just fantastic. If you didn't like the Elric series due to Elric being a dick early on, if you didn't like it because of the grim, nihilistic tone, if you have had the ending spoiled to you, that it's um, depressing and a major downer, try out the Hawkmoon series. It fixes a lot of those things. It, I would say the Chronicles of the Rune Staff are for someone who is not necessarily a massive fan of everything Michael Moorcock, who's coming into his works earlier on for the first time, this is a good place to come in and get your feet wet, get introduced kind of the concept of the Eternal Champion without getting a bunch of baggage attached to or other incarnations they're getting crossed over with, that sort of thing. Next time, I haven't reviewed a movie in a while. Let's do review another one of those. I'll see you then.